Good morning. It's yet another beautiful day in Portugal and instead of standing in front of my creepy door this morning, I thought I would bring it out to the shade of an olive tree and do my little intro from above my garden instead. It's good to switch things up. But that's because today we're going back towards the creepy door into the tiny house slash creepy barn uh, because I'm going to finally give you a look inside what's happening in there. Initially I thought that I was going to, you know, give the place a clean tidy it up, make it look a little less terrifying in there. But then I thought, you know what? I'm living in a building site. I'm sure people are curious to see what that's actually like in reality. So it's just how it is. I've got some building supplies around the place. My stove has been pulled out so I can work on the wall behind it. I think I have a bucket of straw in there somewhere. I'm pretty sure there's sand in a bucket also that I had to bring in out of the rain the other day. Uh, my tools kind of everywhere. The mezzanine section is crammed with stuff. But I did make my bed, so that's one thing, I suppose. But generally, it's just exactly how it is. The way I woke up this morning, I just decided to leave it like that. Partly because I don't really love tidying up, but mostly because I thought I'd just try to give, uh, yeah, kind of like an authentic look at life in a building site. It can be challenging having to move stuff around. It's really crammed in there. It's a small space. It's only around four meters by five meters on the inside. And there's a lot of things in there with me. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's not ideal, but it's amazing what you get used to. Perhaps some of you will watch this video and be totally and utterly horrified at my living conditions. I don't know, but I'm used to it now. I like it, it's cozy, it's fine, and it's all temporary. So I'm slowly working towards turning this creepy barn into a lovely tiny house and I'm excited to show you the whole process and I'm excited to show you inside now. So let's go take a look. So this is my general morning attire. Uh, not appropriate at all. These things are like five euros at the market and they're basically slowly disintegrating. But generally I'll wake up, I'll have a coffee and I'll wander around in my slippers, check my greenhouse, stuff like that. But now we're going back inside the house so I can show you what I'm working on. Okay, but first, and I really hate to do this to you guys because I know you're probably eager to get inside and see what's happening in there, but there's a few things I want to show you on the outside too. So let's just take a quick little walk around the house on the outside. I'll show you what's happening out here and then I promise we're going to go inside the house right after that. Just give me a couple more minutes and then all will be revealed inside the tiny house. So just take a little stroll beyond the banana tree, down to the front of the house, and just take a look at what's happening outside. So I've got a front porch area just here. I've built the terrace out a little bit, and I've made this garden right here. The idea is I'm going to tile the patio with these stones. I believe these stones are slate. I've dug out a huge amount of the soil Built up a base with the rocks. I think I add sand in there and then I bed those in with sand. And then I've got my little side garden here. So this is jasmine. It's very beautiful. It smells amazing. I got it from some friends. And the idea with the jasmine is it's going to grow up big and strong on a trellis that I have yet to make and give me a bunch of privacy from the side. And then moving from the side to the front, I have some herbs. These herb garden box things are probably a temporary feature at the moment. I've got sort of a rock wall underneath there and that's going to be built up a bit more to meet sort of the level of the the patio and maybe go a bit higher. And then beyond there it's impossible not to notice the giant green tarp. This is because of a major mess up that I did and all will be revealed when we go inside. It's window related and it is ridiculous. And so right now I have a kiwi plant and I have a grapevine. They're both looking really happy and healthy and they will eventually grow and go over a pergola that I haven't made yet. So I'll make some kind of a shade structure. Until the plants grow, it'll have probably shade cloth on it because the summer is brutal and I wanna be able to sit on my front porch in the summer. I'll probably add another kiwi or grape down here and if I can squeeze one in way over on the end there, I'll add another one. 
I think the more I have, the better. Gives me more shade, gives me more fruit. Seems like a win-win. And so over here, we have what will eventually become my gray water system uh, and my French drain outlet. So it's very neglected. Uh, it looks like it's actually even clogging up, so I should probably dig that out. Um, so the bottom one is the French drain. I need to figure out where to steer it. It's not gonna go on a right angle like that. It's gonna come out more into the driveway and maybe into some sort of a sinkhole type thing that I fill with gravel. Then this one is the gray water. So you can see it's got a T-junction here. Um, the one that goes this way goes to the bathroom and then the one that goes to the right will be the kitchen. And then over here at the side we have my storage area. I've got some lime down there in buckets, which I'm slowly working through. Uh, I've just got random bits and bobs. Basically, I don't have a tool shed, and this has kind of become a dumping ground. But yeah, it's not, not ideal, but it's uh, definitely a work in progress out here. And then this is where I do my dishes. I heat the water up in this pot here, inside on the stove, and then I dump it in. And let the dishes air dry. And I get my water from this water tank right here that comes from the water cistern down below. Uh, again, it's not ideal to have to come out to get water and do dishes and things, but it's amazing. It's amazing how you get used to things. It's not that big of a deal, really. It's definitely 100% time to head inside. No more fooling around. Behold, the creepy barn, tiny house. As you can see, it's pretty cramped in here. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff in here with me. I'm gonna do my best to show you around and try to give you an idea of what it's like to live in a work in progress, in a building site, um, and basically in a creepy barn that's slowly being turned into a tiny house. Okay, so where to start? Do we go left or do we go right? Let's go left, let's go behind the door. So over here in this corner, which will be sort of hidden behind the door is what will be a cupboard. And that means that my solar system will be hidden away and hopefully be kept somewhat dust free. Hello. So this is also where the geckos and the spiders live. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the geckos and the spiders having their little spot. But recently the geckos, I don't know if they were playing or having sexy time or what happened, but I was sitting innocently at my table and they fell from the ceiling up there and landed on the table right here and scared the absolute crap out of me. Not cool, geckos. Not cool at all. You stay on your side, I've got mine. That's the arrangement. I'm fairly into teaching myself about things, but electricity is where I draw the line. I'm not that interested in it. It can kill me if I get it wrong, so I will basically just not talk about my solar in too much detail. Instead, I will show you pictures of things and maybe that you know what they are. I got it installed by SparkPoint Solar. I'm very happy with their service and the product. I've got tape over the lights because they blink and they're very annoying. And then that's my fuse box down there. The best part is this bad boy down here. It's a lithium battery. And the only advice I would feel comfortable giving anyone buying solar is to get a lithium battery. It just makes it completely idiot proof. And for me, idiot proof is the way to go when it comes to electrics because I have zero interest in learning about them. I'm really, really happy with my solar system. Another thing I know about it is that I have three panels and that's about all I can say. So just down from the solar, I have basically a charging station. I don't yet have plug sockets and all of that wonderful stuff uh, installed. So this is my charging area. Plug in my power tool batteries here. I've got my computer plugged in. I've got my water pump plugged in, ready to go. Internet, my fridge is plugged in here and all of it just connects up under here. And so right now is a pretty good example of what happens when it rains. Um, I have a bag of lime here. I have a tray of lime putty that I mixed up a couple days ago. And in there is the rest of the bucket of lime putty. I even have a bucket of clay over here, which I completely forgot about. I even have some straw. So 
all of the building materials are currently inside with me, which makes things pretty cramped. And so over here we have one of my favorite features of the house so far. Uh, it's my wood stove, and his name is Mr. Burns. I had this guy custom made um, from a dude I found on Facebook. This is where I sent the flue out. I did the hole, but I had some help, uh, you know, kind of figuring out actually how to do it and make sure I don't gas myself to death. The flue pops out the other side just there, and you can see it's not quite vertical, but it's vertical enough for me. Also, I didn't have enough paint to paint certain parts, but as you can see right now, it's only stuffed with some rock wool to stop the rain from getting in. I have a lot of work still to do on the stove. I need to figure out um, the best way to clean the pipe, and so I didn't want to seal it in there just yet for a variety of annoying little reasons. But for now, it's been totally fine. And then coming down here, I have, this is one of my favorite things, a little oven. I use it a lot more than I thought I would. It's amazing. I also really like the, the hearth. Hearth? Hearth? Hearth. That he's sitting upon. I made it with some slate, the same as I'll do with the patio outside. It was a really enjoyable process and I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It's obviously kind of covered in dust and stuff at the moment, but when it's nice and clean, the rocks are kind of different colors and it's really beautiful. This part here beside my stove is very weird looking. I will acknowledge this. So what I'm doing is building a cob wall, but because it's only about maybe 20 centimeters thick, I didn't want it to be self-standing. So I've created this sort of like Frankenstein looking interior skeleton thing. Um, that the cob will sort of grip onto as I build up. It doesn't look very impressive now. Uh, I ran out of clay. I've used a couple different colors of clay. Some of it's from my land, some of it's from a friend's, um, which it's amazing how different the two clays are. But I'm, yeah, slowly building it up and I think I'll actually get to work on this uh, again very soon because I have clay again, which is amazingly exciting. And so over here is basically the most chaotic part of the house. Um, that's where I keep my tools. And generally they're sort of organized, but it then deteriorates into like serious disorganization. And then I can't take it anymore because I can't find anything. Then I tidy it up and then the cycle repeats itself. So I generally just sort of pile my firewood here. This bucket is a bunch of things that I use for doing plastering. This bucket is just the tools I use most often. Um, this is my paddle drill. That's out because I was mixing lime. I've got some Makita tools and things, some hand tools in that thing there. I don't even really know what's in there. Screws and nails, turpentine, linseed oil mix, glue, saw, plate of beans. So yeah, so just uh, basically a pile of random crap. And over here is where I keep my dishes and some pots and things like that. This used to live over in the kitchen, but now because I'm working on the kitchen, I've, I've put it over here. So it's not ideal. I have to kind of traverse a lot of obstacles in order to get to like a fork, but it keeps life interesting, you know? So I'm sitting in my office space. I'm working on the video and just having lunch at the same time. I'd like to say I had a salad, but this was actually a bacon sandwich. And then I've got the nice little view of the door there. I don't have a window yet, so I keep the door open. But once the flies come, that's going to become very, very risky and annoying. So I need to sort out a screen at some point. But this is my workspace, basically. Um, I sit on my couch and... I seem to be spending a lot of time typing away at this computer. Plastic table, couch as a chair, not ideal really, but um, you know, it, it's fine for now. This video is getting a little too long and so I'm going to cut it short and do the tour of the rest of the house next time. I'm not exactly sure how I've managed to blab on for so long yeah, about such a small house uh, that this has become a two-parter, but um, 
you know, I really do love talking about clay, and I do go on about a wood stove. Who doesn't love a long conversation about a wood stove, I ask you. But in the next video, I would like to take you to the other side of the house, uh, a mere 15 centimeters that way. And I'll also talk about stuff like uh, what the house is made out of, the size of it, and some plans for what I want to do with it as well. So all that's going to come in the next video, the second part. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll see you in part two next week. And I'm going to go outside and enjoy this beautiful day in my, in my garden. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please like the video. And think about subscribing as well. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.